Hello. Thank you for choosing Simeo. I'd like to spend a few minutes getting you off to a fast start. I'll start with a brief product overview, and then we'll build and run a simple model. This is Simeo, as it might appear when you first load it. You might notice some minor differences based on the version that you're using and the edition you are using. You can see at the top of the screen are the familiar Microsoft-style ribbons that change based on the context of what you're doing. Uh, in this middle area is where you'll be building the model. On the left side are the tools that, that you use to build the model with, and on the right side are properties and navigation window. You may note right in the center of the window, we have a big black area that gives you some very helpful tips about how to do things. For example, a 2 moves you into 2D mode, pressing a 3 moves you into a 3D mode. Uh, many of these things are useful, and definitely you want to come back here. Uh, but the key thing that you want to remember about this and memorize this right now is the H key hides and shows this message. So if you click anywhere in this white window and press the H key, you'll get that away. Uh, if you ever want to come back again, just remember H key toggles it on, H key toggles it off. So over on the left side of the window, you'll see the libraries that we use to build objects with. You'll note that just about anything you point to on the screen has tooltips, and some of these tooltips are actually quite extensive. Uh, so rather than just having a few words or a phrase, we try and give you a very good representation of what uh, the object does or what the item does so that you can uh, see without going into the help exactly what's going on. But mentioning help, there is a comprehensive help up here. Uh, that, or with the F1 key, that is a searchable help or printable help. Uh, if you want to print it, it's about 900 pages. So I would say probably want to use the online searchable help. So we're going to start by building a little model first. Uh, and it's a click and drag interface. So if we click on source and drag it into the model, I'm going to use my scroll button to scroll out a little bit to give us a little bit more space. I'm going to double click on server and I'm going that puts me into a multi place mode that I can place two servers and hit escape or right click in order to turn that double click mode off uh, and then I'm going to place a sync over here uh, again with a click in place so that is probably about the simplest model that we'd ever want to build and if I hit the run menu up here you'll see that I have things running through the system. These little triangles represent our generic entity. Of course, you can customize those to be whatever you want them to be. The server uh, shows you, uh, indicates something that is constraining flow through the system. And these come in at the source. They move through server one, then server two, and then into the sync one. You'll note that there are little green lines uh, just before and after the server and during the server, the before and after are the places where entities wait. So you'll see two or three entities waiting here. The triangle here indicates the entity that is being processed. Note that I can also add paths in here. So I can double click on a path to put me in a multi-place mode. And I can click on from a exit of one object to the entrance of another object, so I can make a straight line path if I want. Uh, but it doesn't have to be a straight line path. I can make these paths go anywhere I want. So here I'm going to click on the exit to the server, go down, click in a few random places, and then come back and end at the server two. Likewise, I'm going to do one more, just a direct line path from server two to sync. So now when I run, you'll see that them coming, uh, following the exact paths that I have written. I can even change these paths around and even add additional paths while we're going. So maybe I have some paths that bypass server 2 and go directly into sync. You'll also note on here that while the server itself is an object, it has a couple sub-objects associated with it. In this case, it has an input node named input at server 1 and an output node named output at server 1. Any object, whether it's a main object or a sub-object that, that you click on, 
will show all of its properties over here. So the properties of server one are showing here with a capacity type, which is either fixed or follow the schedule capacity. Initial capacity, if it's fixed, you can say, well, I want to start with one or two entities in here. Uh, ranking rule, uh, processing time. Here I'm saying it's a, it's a sample from a random distribution named triangular with a minimum mode and maximum of 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. The little plus here indicate there's more information about that, and that extra information is the fact that that's represented in minutes, although it could be any other unit. We also have buffer logic in here, right? Input buffer, output buffer, and general information about it. So if I wanted to call this uh, something else other than server, I can just double click on that and change it here, or I can change it directly over in this file over there. Now, when you first load Simio, you'll see this show commonly used properties only is on, and, and that's there to kind of show you the most important subset of uh, the, op the properties. But if you click that off, that applies to all objects, and now you're seeing all properties, not just the commonly used properties. So you can see that a few more properties have come up in, in the process logic area, and we have lots more categories, including a category for reliability logic, where you can specify failures on that device, uh, state assignments, so you can assign uh, variables and entity attributes, a place to specify secondary resources, a place to indicate full activity-based costing, uh, and add-on process triggers for customizing the logic. So there's a lot of capability here. I can run this now on the Run ribbon, uh, and I can run it and see it interactively. I can also fast-forward to it and see it run. So down here, you'll see it actually ran 100%. 24 hours ran to the end of the run. And here I can go over to the results window and see the results in terms of a pivot table. But a better place to look at the results is actually by doing experiments. So what we just did was called an interactive run that just did a single replication. But we can get to the experiment over here by right-clicking on model and saying, create a new experiment. And again, you can see an extensive toolkit comes up there showing you what's happening with that. In the experiment, the very simplest thing that experiment does is to run multiple replications. So here we've said we want to run 10 replications, and so far zero of the 10 have been run. So if I just go to the Run button, it's now running all 10 replications, and you see them running down here. Uh, it will use all the processors you have on your machine. So if you have, for example, a dual threaded quad processor, that means you essentially have eight processors available, then it will run eight replications at once. Uh, and then in this case, it would have run eight replications and then two more replications. Now, one thing that simulations are really great at is generating huge volumes of data, but turning that data into something usable uh, is often a bit of a challenge. But in Simio, we have the pivot grid which if you've used Excel or other data processing uh, products, uh, you might be familiar with the concept of pivot tables that are basically take reams of data and turn it into usable information. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So it shows you across the 10 replications, what was the average, minimum, maximum, and half width of any of these statistics. Uh, within these pivot tables, you can sort it, you can filter it. So for example, if I only wanted to see uh, utilization statistics, I click on that little filter button there, and I can click off the show all and click on scheduled utilization. And now I have a report showing me just scheduled utilization. So in literally just a couple of clicks, you can get to any customized report. You can go back to that. You can save those if you want, but to get back to the default, you just Use that under Change View. Now that you have the basics of this, let me go back to the model again in our facility view, just so we can look at what we're doing. But uh, the real thing I want to show you is the support ribbon. So on the support ribbon, that's how you get to know it. So let's, let's look at some of the options of how you can learn more 
about your model. So to start with, Simio Simbit Solutions, if you click on the Simbit Solutions, you'll see it will load all of the Simbits currently in Simio. This one happens to have 173 Simbits. And uh, you can do a search on any type of uh, thing that you want to know. So perhaps I'm interested in sequences. And it shows that there are three Simbits uh, shown that use sequences. And if I wanted to, for example, uh, look at a, uh, a symbol, uh, something uh, using alternate sequences, I can just click on that. And it will load a new copy of Simio. And in this sim, in this Simbit, uh, all of our Simbits are small models that show a very targeted thing. So in this case, all of our Simbit models have a description that describes what it does, how it does it, what concepts it uses, and how to build the model. So we'll get out of the Simbit, but there are, as I said, 173 Simbits available at the moment, and that's steadily increasing, so you can use that to help get to know things. There are also a number of examples. And you can see lots of examples in healthcare, hospitals, uh, scheduling, warehouse, mining, airports, lots of different examples. I'm not going to load any of those now, but you can see uh, in particular, uh, there were some scheduling examples in there and you might want to use those if you want to look at the uh, scheduling features. In terms of books, we have a, a large number of ebooks in the software, uh, including a Rapid Modeling Solutions, Introduction to Simio, and uh, Simulation. And, and this gives you a very good uh, overview if you like to read in, in print. Uh, there's lots of information. And in particular, I'll, I'll direct you to the appendix of that is actually the introductory chapter from, from one of the leading textbooks in Simio. We also have uh, a, guide, uh, a guide for getting planning and scheduling with Simio, process improvement principles, and other valuable books. In terms of videos, we have over 30 hours of videos that is available to help you get to know Simio. So if you like to learn through videos, I encourage you to go to one of these. The introductory topics takes you to a 20-minute video set uh, of, of why choose Simio. Uh, there's also an 11 module introduction to Simio and scheduling book. Uh, you can also look at uh, intermediate topics. There's an eight hour introduction to Simio video set that's free. There's also the opportunity to get both level one and level two certification down here. So if you choose any of these, it will take you to our web page where it tells you a little bit more about each of these. And then this will take you on to the actual training program that's available. The other option on videos takes you to our YouTube area, and there are actually hundreds of videos. You can see they're selected by different categories, such as student projects, uh, Simio 8 updates, Simio features overview, fun with Simio, so lots of different uh, videos that are available here. Coming back here, this, this part in the center, the My Software section of this, is something that you need to know if you call in for support. They're going to want to know what version you're using, and it's the first four digits are usually uh, what's significant. So in this case, I'm using version 9.147, and the 147 is actually the sprint number. Clear over to the right-hand side, I mentioned that you can use help, uh, and the help brings up a search feature, and you can search through anything that you want to do, and, and it searches through all of the Simbit topics as well. So you can use help as your interface to get into the Simbit. We also have a very rich user form. And if you look to the user form, you'll see uh, to start with the first five categories don't have a lot of activity in it. Uh, those are available to the public. But what I strongly encourage you to do is go to that first topic and find out how to sign up for Simio Insider and sign up for that right away. Uh, there's no cost to it. It's very easy to do. And once you sign up as a Simio Insider, then you have access to all of the rest of this. And you can see both from the number of topics and the number of entries that this is a, a rich 
uh, resource of information uh, that, that you might want to use, uh, including help getting started, uh, downloads to get the latest sprint, shared items that people have shared with you, uh, bugs and issues, performance tips, so lots of rich information here. And finally, I'll direct you to this last email, which is how to get more information. So uh, if you haven't already bought Simio and you'd like to or want to find more information about it, uh, you can use this as a contact to link to email sales. Or if you need some help getting, getting to know Simio a little bit better, you have some technical questions, then we encourage you to uh, use this email and it will email your project file uh, along with uh, your questions. You'll see by default we come up in Simio Personal Edition, which you can feel free to use this to solve any problems that you want, but it is designed as a personal edition. It's free, uh, and so you can't build very large models with it, only, only relatively small. But if you have commercial or academic activation, uh, then you can go to this place here where it says enter your license key. You click on that and it will bring you up to a place uh, where you can add the key that you received in the email. So at this point, I'll pause and say thank you for choosing Simio, and I wish you every success in your modeling efforts.